Hey guys, so not a live video. Um, instead, you're getting a story time. Uh, because I recently got back from the Great White North, uh, even further north than where I live. Uh, and I came across something pretty cool that I thought I would let you know. And uh, that is about the Wahila. Now, some of you might know what it is, some of you might not. Basically, um, I'll let you know what it is and then I'll tell you why I came across it. Um, and I'm hungry, and I'm just gonna basically be eating some shitty frozen food. So, if you hear the microwave in the background, that's what that is. Also, my apologies for swinging you around like this, but I'm gonna switch over to my left arm. It's still hard for me to do some things with my left arm. Um, so, Wahila. They are basically, um... Usually they're described as a giant white wolf. Um, they're kind of more like if a wolf and a bear had a uh, baby and it was the size of a fucking polar bear. Actually, I think a little bit bigger because the polar bears ran away. Um, remove film from brownie. Three and a half minutes and then the brownie. You know, I actually don't mind the brownies from these. Um, but yeah, basically the Wahila are a huge... Um, huge creature. Absolutely insanely large. Uh, mostly you see them up north. Um, I think someone in Michigan claimed to have seen one. Uh, and that's entirely possible because I'm not going to stop a Wahila if they decide to move. Because, uh, yeah, it... Like 1,200 pounds of angry. More often than not. Um, you can actually find Wahilas that are... sociable to an extent, um, but when I say to an extent, I mean very, like, they're, they're territorial, they're really territorial when it comes to, um, you know, where they live up north. Uh, they tend to have huge swaths of land, um, that, uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> Some of the territory kind of overlaps. Anyways, they have these huge swaths of land where they um, just kind of take over. And usually Wahilas are quite solitary. Um, they might kind of look like a huge dire wolf or something like that, but they aren't very wolf-like. But like I said, you can occasionally find some that are sociable. And usually those will be the ones that will have decided to go somewhere more southern. Uh, the Nahani Valley is absolutely gorgeous. I've been over it. I've never been to it. I had a school teacher that wanted to um, sail up the Nahani River. I don't know if she ever actually did it. I sincerely doubt Madame Tremblay is watching. Um, but if you are, did you ever go up the Nahani? But yeah. Um, anyways, I was up north and uh, let me tell you, the cold and the shoulder suck. It's minus 20 degrees outside, so that's like... And below, I think, for my American friends. Um, and it was colder than that up north. Anyways, I got called uh, up to... Um, I was in Norman Wells. And uh, then I had to take a little hot helicopter ride. Now, helicopter ride in the winter is always fucking terrifying because when you land, it's a whiteout. And I ain't repelling from a helicopter. Especially not while it's moving and static repels require arm strength I don't have right now. But yeah, anyways, um, up in Norman Wells, took a helicopter about 25 kilometers down the valley. Um, I love how I say down the valley when I mean we went a little bit further south. Eh, is that? Southwest. Um, and if you've never been to Norman Wells, it's equal parts odd, neat, and icky, and gorgeous, so, um, but yeah, anyways, flew in there, uh, flew out with a helicopter, and had to go to a camp where, um, there were some guys who had spotted, um, some Zeds, and normally, if I'm up north, um, I try to look into what's around there, like, Delaney and stuff like that, 
um, or um, oh, pretty much like well, the hook took. Um, talk to the doctor. I start trying to read, you know, what might have happened in the local area. But this was fresh. There was, like, really nothing around it. Anyways, I get to the uh, campsite, and I talk to the guys. They get flown out on the chopper that I came in on. There's only, like, three of them. Um, and so I'm there. <laughs> I had to borrow a parka because the coat that I use for here is 20 years old now. Um, so I had this big, poofy parka with big, poofy... Um, hood with fake fur and I've got my uh, balaclava on and I've got a let's see if I can get it easy yep there it is I've got uh, my little neoprene mask underneath it and I've got my mitts my skidoo mitts and everything like that and uh, got my backpack I've got some big knives and one of the guys had actually loaned me um, his rifle and it was a 4570, and I love these things. Go through a bison the wrong way. Um, but he had loaned me his rifle. Um, and I figured, hey, what the hell? Why not? We'll uh, take this rifle with me and we'll find out what's going on. Um, you know the reasons why I normally don't carry a firearm, but it's the north. And honestly, a lot of times when you're going through spots in the north, uh, you're basically required to carry a firearm. So. Um, RCMP already knew I was going up there, so it wasn't like I was going to get arrested. And I didn't even have to worry about transporting the damn thing. But yeah, anyways, um, yeah, this brownie's still kind of gooey. Um, get to the site, unshoulder the rifle, love lever guns. Um, you just feel so, yeah, three and a half. All right, still kind of gooey. Um, you feel like such a cowboy. But yeah, um, maybe my film's doing two minutes. Okay, well, maybe my microwave isn't quite as powerful as theirs. Whatever. Yeah, it's more like lava cake than brownie. Don't care. Um, but yeah, I uh, work the lever, so I've got a round in there. I shoulder the rifle, and I can kind of see tracks leading off for two minutes and 20 seconds just in case and so I go off in the direction of the tracks <laughs> this was probably one of the easiest cleanups I'd ever run into um yeah because working with the ghouls uh with that raw head um still had to deal with all that but basically I get I got about two kilometers away which took me fucking three and a half hours there was a path I had snowshoes but don't let anyone tell you when you're hiking somewhere um, especially up north that it's not going to take forever uh, I, I say it was two kilometers probably more like a kilometer and a half and yeah it took me three hours three and a half hours um, and by the time I got there I was you know I'm basically in quite a skidoo suit, but parka, uh, winter pants, um, some Kaminsk. I can't remember the name of the boots, but some uh, one of the uh, guys in Norman Wells was Finnish, and he had the same size boots as me, so he loaned me his boots um, because my boots were fine up to minus thirty-two, and it felt a lot colder than that. Anyways, uh, yeah, it took me like three and a half hours to go what is essentially, what, 1,600, 1,500 meters, um, but fuck that, <laughs> I was freezing cold, I actually had, uh, hand warmers underneath, um, uh, my armpits, and one on top of my shoulder here, just to keep the pain away, and I get to what probably was an old, like, hunting cabin, um, all smashed in, looks like, you know, at least, judging from the gray of the wood and everything, I'd say it was at least five or six years since someone had actually lived there, <laughs> and I get there, and strewn about are all these bones that have been gnawed upon, 
and sitting there in the middle of all these bones is this big fucking wolf bear, not quite one, not quite the other. Like, the head is wolf-like, but pull the snout back a little bit and kind of raise the cheekbones so it's more like a bear. Round it out a little bit more. And, oh, and the ears. Um, not really wolf-like ears. Uh, round the tips and um, from here, kind of move them up here just a little bit more. So a really weird combination of wolf-bear hybrid. Man-bear-pig. Wolf-bear hybrid. Um, fucking big. Biggest thing I've ever seen next to a bison. Um, and it was probably bigger than a bison, but bison always seem bigger. I, I don't like ungulates. Yeah. If it goes in a herd, the herd can turn on you really quick. This thing's solo. <laughs> Not thinking, I raise the rifle. Uh, and I take a sight picture on this thing, which I now realize uh, after what happens next was a wahila. And I take a sight picture on it, and it puts down the leg it's gnawing on, <laughs> and turns to face me full on, just kind of boom, 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 sits and stares at me. Tilts its head to the side and goes, and that's it. Turns around, fucks off about 20 or 30 feet away, just into some trees. And I don't really hear anything. Uh, except when it went through the trees, it kind of went through the trees. Kind of went a little wispy. Um, my food's ready. Uh, so, rifle... To my shoulder, I start walking in, I look around, and there's just scattered bones, the occasional chunk of meat uh, still attached to some legs, uh, the ribs, um, the heads are all, like, completely stripped, so I started thinking, like, what the fuck was going on here? All of a sudden, out of where the Wahila had walked off, in walks an Inuit woman. Pretty much dressed like you would see in, like, a tourist outfit. Um, I have been to the north. I have met many Inuit people. I have eaten seal eyeballs. Um, you know, all that shit. That was a weird one. I think I've told you guys about that before. But, yeah. Uh, she comes out. Starts talking to me. Um, barely, barely accented. Um, she actually starts off with English or French. <laughs> I went either because my jaw just hit the floor. Just like five foot two, five foot three. Um, and she goes, these are mine. And I went, the zombies belong to you. You created them thinking I'm dealing with a necro, necromancer. And she goes, no, these are my food. They were in my territory. And I don't know. This is just hot enough that I want to mitt or something. He goes, no, they were in my territory. They weren't supposed to be here. So now they're my food. And I, it suddenly occurs to me and I go, you were, and she goes, the Wihila. I am the Wihila. No idea what the hell this is at that point, but I'd heard some stories. Um, you, you basically like folklore, kind of a hobby now, really. Um, but yeah, she uh, basically had claimed all of the meat there. These guys had apparently died in basically a snowstorm. They hadn't quite become Wendigo and were eating each other, but they were sort of like restless dead. And when they woke up, which I guess was about... Two... Two... Three days before I got there. Um, she could smell them. Uh, not just the, the rotting meat, because honestly, rotting meat will freeze. Um, but the not rightness of it. Um, so she just... Like, Wahila territory is apparently fucking huge, like hundreds of kilometers. Um, and she just kind of trotted towards them. 
Um, they had already managed to scare the guys uh, at the camp who had then radioed in, which brought me into it. And she pretty much got there, I guess, about the same day as I did, and dispatched them and ate them all. So, yeah. Um, don't fuck with a Wahila. <laughs> I basically said, okay, well, thank you. Um, is it all right if I leave now? I'll just report this as taken care of. She goes, hmm. And then I turned and walked fucking four hours. Snow is in my face. Just fucking cold. Uh, back to camp. Uh, radioed the guys. And, uh, yeah, thankfully the, um, the camp guys had left some of their uh, equipment around. So I was able to uh, <laughs> warm up for about five minutes before the helicopter showed up. And then, yeah, the Explorer Hotel... Really, really nice, comfy bed. Um, if you ever get to Yellowknife, stay there. I flew. We went back to Norman Wells, and then there's a hotel in Norman Wells. Um, and I already stayed there a couple of times. Um, but didn't have the best restaurant, and I was cold, and I was hungry. So I got a charter flight, which was really nice, because that's how I got there. Uh, and like 45, 55 minutes later, Len Yellowknife... Explorer in and then fucking room service just hot food room service asked him if they got an electric blanket and I wrapped myself up and I literally just told them I had just flown in from uh, up by Norman Wells and they're like oh okay not a problem so fuck but yeah don't fuck with the wheel <laughs> it's like eight corpses just eaten oh yeah yeah I could learn something from them, and if I could learn how to shift into a, like, 1,200-pound therianthrope, that would be handy. Uh, maybe that would heal the shoulder. Ah, well. Anyways, thanks for listening. Um, just remember, Canada's great, except for the zombies, and don't fuck with the wahila. Bye, guys.